Yeah. So let's talk about the basics of servlet in first place. So the topic here is servlets. Now, what exactly servlets are? You know, in Java we have different words. We have we have a word called as applet. We have a word called as servlet. We have a word called as facelet. Uh, we have word like scriptlets. You know, we have all these words, and all these words ends with let. Now, what exactly this let means? Now, when it comes to applet, what an applet is? So, applet represents an application component. So, basically, this let simply means a component. So, let is a component, and app is application. This let again, it's a component, but that's a server component. Then we have facelets. Now, face means view, right? I mean, we recognize people by their face. So, face means view. So, we have face comp a view component. Then we have script component. So, all these words are having something in common, which is let. So, let simply means a component. So, when you say applet, which is application component, so you must have heard about applet when you, when you work with Core Java. So, what exactly applets are? So when you say you have, uh, so you know, in when you learn Core Java, at the end of Core Java, we have a concept of using views. You know, we can create GUI using applets. So what applets are? So applets is something which which resides on server side. So it resides on server. When you want to run this, uh, when you want to run the applet, it comes to your client machine. So it runs on client machine. That means you have to request for the applet from the server, and then that applet will be downloaded on your machine, and you can run it. Example, you know, uh, nowadays we don't use applet anywhere, but let's say if you, if you want to take the example, when you play games on Facebook, what happens is when you, when you play games on Facebook, all those games, those, those games resides on server, but the moment you want to play with those games, it will get downloaded on your client machine. Okay, so those those games will be downloaded on your client machine and it will run on the client machine. It will not run on the server. Making sense? So when you say it will run on the server, or so it, it will run on the client machine, so that's why it is called as application component because it behaves like an application. So it resides on server, that's true, but it will run on the client machine. That's an applet. When you say servlet, I want you to guess this. So when you say servlet, it is a server component. So it again, it resides on server, but the difference is it runs on server. And that's what is called a server component. OK, so servlet is something which resides on server, and it, it, runs, on, it runs on server. Okay. Again, we'll not talk about facelets and scriptlet now. This is the further topic. We'll talk about scriptlet in JSP, and we'll, we, don't, we will not we'll, we'll not talk, talking about facelets anyway. So the main main idea here is when you talk about servlet, servlet is basically a server component. So it resides on server and it runs on server. But why do we need servlet? I mean, we have we have HTML, we have CSS, we have JavaScript. Then why we need servlet? So let's start with the basics. Let's say let's talk about why exactly we need HTML. So when you say HTML, HTML stands for Hyper Text Markup Language, right? So HTML stands for Hyper Text Markup Language. Now, why we why we need HTML is because to design a web page. Let's say I want I want to create my own website, and when you say website, so websites are basically Web pages. I mean, if you talk about any website, you know, all these websites are built with the help of web pages. We'll be having home page. We'll be having login page. We'll be having, uh, we'll be having logout page. We'll be having register page. We'll be having add friends. You know, all these websites will be having some pages. So we basically will build those pages, and all these pages will be having an extension will that dot s dot html. When you create an image, you say .jpeg. But when you create a web page, we say .html, right? So using HTML, we can create a web page. So the only way to create a web page is using the extension .html. Now in HTML page, we use some tags, right? We have a very famous tag, which is HTML tag open. 
then we close the HTML tag, so we all we do all those things. That was the only way to so the only way to use or to create a web page is using HTML tags. So we have HTML tag, we have body tag, and we all are familiar with this, right? In fact, you cannot call yourself as a programmer if it, I mean, as an uh, IT professional if you don't know HTML, right? This is very basic. <clears throat> so we use we use HTML tags to create a web page, and then we use body tag. So we use body tag, then we use we, we use we, we use some other tags. Let's say if you want to print hello world, we need to use this stuff. So my question is, if I want to create a web page, okay. So if I want to create a web page, and in that web page, I would just want to print hello world. Do we need to? Is it, is it compulsory to use HTML and body tag? Can we create a HTML page or a web page without these two tags? So I have this question for everyone. What do you think, uh, Chakra, Dhruv, and Gaurav? So Chakra is saying it's not compulsory. What about you, Dhruv and uh, Gaurav? What do you think? OK, right now, no idea. Let's try. Let's try. I mean, I mean, we can do that. In fact, we don't need these two tags to create a to create a web page. You can simply say "Hello World" and you can create a web page. We don't need to do that. We don't need so we don't need those tags to create a web page. You can simply create a new file. So you can click on you can click here and you can create a new file and you can say "Hello World." You can save this file with the extension .html. So when you save this with the extension .html, and if you open the web page in the browser, you will be getting hello world. In fact, you can create a comp you can do, you can write all this text and you can create a web page for you. Then question arise when you can build a web page with the help of this text without using tags, then why we, why do we use tags? Okay, hold on. Uh, I guess Gaurav is not able to hear me. Uh, what about those Dhruv and uh, Chakra? Can you hear me? Okay. Let me just just let me, let me type to Gaurav. Gaurav, check your speakers. Okay, so let me just continue. So when you have this, when you have this tags, and if you can create a web page, that why we need those tags? Let's say in this web page, I want to, uh, I want to add images. I want to put some links. I want to provide a proper format. Example: I want to print "Hello World" in the biggest font available, and then I want to print this sentence with a very small font, right? So what you can do is you can put this in the H1 tag, right? We use tags for that. This is the biggest tag, biggest uh, text available. I, I can you can increase the font size by using font tag and all those stuff, and you can put this ASD with the H6, right? So we can open H6 and we can close H6. H6 is the smallest font, or the smallest heading. So when you have, so we can do this with the help of tags, right? So we can, uh, we can. Uh, we can design a web page with the help of HTML. It is not compulsory to write HTML tags. But to design a web page, of course, we need HTML tags. Exactly, Drew. For formatting, we use HTML and CSS. OK, so we use HTML. So we use HTML to design a web page. That means to make your page beautiful, what's that, this one. So to make your page beautiful, we use tags, right? So for me, it's not a markup language. It's not a markup language. HTML for me is a hypertext beautiful with the help of HTML, right? So we have to apply makeup to pay to make your page beautiful. 
okay then then why we why we need css when you have the so if html is a makeup language css becomes a a makeup toolkit so your css becomes a makeup toolkit so if you want to look more beautiful uh, you need to use css as, as a toolkit right why to have why to you know you can buy some cosmetic and all the stuff and you can put that in a particular box and that's your css but just having css html will not make your page more beautiful right you need to also make your page more interactive so people love those people or people get attracted to people or maybe opposite gender only when the other gender is interactive no one no one no one get i mean no one get uh, attracted to person who is just good looking you need a person who is who is very interactive and all the stuff the question is how can you make your page more interactive the only way to make your page interactive is using javascript right example if you want to achieve those animations you know uh, when you go to a web page where you have continuous image changing that's your javascript so we use javascript to make your page more interactive okay so to to make your page beautiful we use html to you to make it more much more beautiful we use css right and then to make it interactive we use javascript and the entire web designing rooms between this which is html css javascript again we have different frameworks like we have jquery we have uh, we have other angular js those all are client side programming so this is just a front end part okay so that means to create a website so to create a website we need html css and javascript this is the basic for any website so from today if you want to be a web developer or a website developer you simply have to learn these three these three things html css and javascript and you can become a web designer okay and there's a question from group interactive means dynamic web page or uh, not exactly interactive doesn't means dynamic web page interactive simply means let's say if you have 10 images in your on your page and when you go on the first image and that image comes up you know it zoom or you get that zooming effect so when you go to amazon.in to buy some products and when you take your mouse cursor to to a particular image you can see uh, you you can see a magnified image that is done with the help of javascript does that make sense though perfect so so yes so now we have so we have html css and javascript so if you can learn these three things you are top of the world but hold on is it the only thing we require the problem is let's say you want to create a web page because see we don't talk about websites we, we only talk about web applications right i mean no one says web app now no one, no one says website we always say web application so what this term means what is web application means let's say i want to add two numbers you know whenever you start with any programming language maybe c c plus plus we always talk about addition of two numbers right i mean the first code you write is hello world that's the that's the compulsion thing the second code the second code which is which is for addition of two numbers and then we go for prime number and all the all those things can we add two numbers in html so my question is can we add two numbers in html uh, let's try to answer that what do you think what do you think Lou? Uh, can we add two numbers in html only using html Um, okay, so we got answer from Drew and Gaurav saying no, and then we have got answer from Chakra uh, that cannot be user driven. So answer is no. Okay, we cannot we cannot build a web page. I mean, we cannot build a page which which, which can add two numbers only with HTML because HTML is not a programming language; it's a markup language, right? So we can add two numbers because we want. So when you say you want to add two numbers, that means you have to process it 
So when you say processing, it means you have to take the values, you have to process the information, and that processing comes under computation. So when you say processing, it means computation. And computation cannot be possible, or it is not possible in makeup languages, or oh, sorry, markup languages for that matter. Okay. But yes, we can do that. Uh, we can add two numbers in JavaScript. So you can write JavaScript code in your HTML. So let's say if you take two text field where a user enters five and six, when you click on the button, that will call JavaScript. And in JavaScript, we can add two numbers, right? Which is very simple. That means to make a page which can add two numbers, we can use HTML and JavaScript. But let's say, now what, uh, let's, let's go beyond that. Let's say I have a file, or maybe I have a database, and I want to fetch the data from the database. And I want to show that data on the client machine. OK, now can I do that? Can I, can I fetch the data from database using JavaScript? First of all, using HTML, not possible. Can we do that with the help of, uh, can, can we do that with the help of JavaScript? What do you think? Dhruv, uh, Gaurav, and Chakra. So, but we can add two numbers, right? We can add two numbers with the help of JavaScript. Uh, but can we fetch data from database? Uh, no, the answer is no, we cannot do that. We cannot fetch data from databases in JavaScript because JavaScript works only on browser. And now we are talking about a feature where it will interact with databases, and that's not possible. You cannot write JavaScript again when it comes to uh, node.js uh, if you're not if you don't know about this that's okay there is a technology called node.js I don't know if you heard about it uh, this is a type of JavaScript framework which runs on server okay but except that except node.js or uh, there are some other JS as well but normal JavaScript cannot so normal JavaScript cannot do that I mean cannot I'm getting some calls here. So yes, so normal JavaScript cannot do that. You cannot interact with database directly with your yeah. So we cannot interact with we we cannot interact with database using JavaScript. Okay. Now question arises, uh, how to connect with JavaScript? So before understanding how database gets connected with the JavaScript, let's, let's see how exactly internet works so that we can add those things there. Uh, let me share my, uh, this thing with you. Okay. Can you see a white screen there, everyone? Okay. That's my iPad screen here. <clears throat> okay. Now, how exactly it, is, it, it works? So let's say we have a client machine here, okay? And then we have a server on this side. So we have client and we have a server. And of course, to connect with a server, you need you need something called as, so to, to connect your client with server, you need something called as a network, right? Of course, you need internet pack. You need a geo SIM card to connect to the server, right? So let's say we, have, we, are, we, we, want to try to, we want to try to connect a client with the server. So what we'll do is we'll send a request from a client machine to the server. And that is possible with the help of a protocol, which we all love. And that protocol is HTTP, which is Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So this is the protocol which is responsible to take the request. And it will take the request from the client machine to the server. right? And on this server, there will be some pages. Let's say you want to call any page. So there will be a server on the page. And you just have to call that page. So let's say this page name is abc.html. So what you have to do is you have to mention the name of the page. So from the client machine, you have to mention, okay, I want to call, I want to call this thing, which is abc.html. 
So the request goes to server, and the server will will send you back the response. Okay, and that response will be an HTML page, right? So you have to request for the page, and then you will be getting the response. So you have to request for the page, and you'll be getting the response. The response would be in abc.html. Okay, but what happens is sometimes you have to request not for HTML page, but for a dynamic page. Now, what this dynamic page is, uh, let's say I have a page here. Okay, and this page will be having some data which is coming from database. Let's say I have a database server here. Let's say this is Oracle, or maybe MySQL for that matter. This is your database. Okay, and I want to fetch, I want to fill up this page with the data which is coming from database. So database data will be coming to this page. But hold on, how do can how can you fetch data from database? Can we use HTML? Uh, the answer is no. Can we use JavaScript? Uh, can we use JavaScript? No. Okay. Can we use some of the things? What What else we have? So this page cannot interact with database. So what we need is we need a helper application here. So we need a helper application. Now this helper application has a power to interact with database, and it will give you that data. See, we want data, right? And data that data should be coming from the server or from the database. So, so that helper application will help you to fetch the data. And then that data will be assigned to the page. Now that page will be coming to client. That means this time you are not asking for ABC.html, you're asking for another page which is which is there on the server, but that page doesn't have any data. The data will be generated on the user request. Okay. If we talk about this page, which is which is abc dot which is abc dot html, now this page was already there, but this page was not already there. It was it was created or it is created on the user request. But the data of this page is coming from database, which is done with the help of helper application. Okay. Now this helper application help you to build a dynamic, okay, I have a very bad handwriting for that matter. Okay, so this will help you to create a dynamic web page. Because this page, which is abc.html, is simply a static page. So this is a, okay. so this is a static page. Okay, and the page which is generated on the user request will be called as a dynamic page. Make sense? Gaurav, Chakra, and Dhruv? Okay, perfect. So we have a dynamic page. So to create a dynamic page, we require a helper app. And then we can do that. We can put the data in the in the page. Now, just to take a simple example, uh, let's let's imagine we have. Okay, let's imagine we have this concept of uh, watch. Let's say you know when you go to a restaurant and when you order or when you order a a idli sambar for that matter. I don't know if you if okay everyone is that right. That's a uh, th that's a universal food we have. So when you say you want to eat idli sambar, you will go to a restaurant, and there will be a waiter. You will say, okay, hey, I want uh, I want idli sambar. He will go to the kitchen, and he will bring you the kitchen idli sambar. You cannot customize it, right? Because those pages are those that dish is pre-built. But when it comes to dosa or any any other dish, like, let's say biryani, in that case, that is not pre-built, right? So on the request, they will make it for you. So dynamic web page is something like dosa and static page is something like idli sambar okay so yeah that's how you create a dynamic web page but question arise we can create a static page with the help of html how we can create dynamic page because see if you request for a static page the response the response will be html 
the response would be HTML, right? Okay, my even my pen is not working. So, so that is HTML. So when you when you send a response from a client machine to this, I mean from the server machine to the client machine, the response will be in the format of HTML. Then question arises: What is this? What is the response type of dynamic web page? Static web page response is, of course. HTML. What about dynamic page? What do you think? Okay, Chakra says uh, HTML. What about you? Okay, everyone says HTML, and yes, the the response will be HTML for both, for the static page and dynamic page. The response is HTML. But question arises: How to create that page? Which language we need to create that page? Now there are multiple languages we can follow here. We can use PHP, one of the topmost language for web development, right? Which is very easy to learn, uh, very uh, used everywhere, and there are lots of vacancies available for PHP. There is one language you can learn. Next is ASP, which is from Microsoft. Then we have Servlets. Then we have uh, Ruby. So we have lots of languages available to to make a dynamic web page. Now, which one to choose here? We can use PHP, no harm in that. We can use, because PHP has the power to connect with database. Even ASP has a power to connect with database, in, in fact, Servlet and Ruby as well. Which one to choose now? Now, when it comes to PHP, they are good for websites which are stable, which, which, which are lightweight, where, uh, you know, for small web application, everyone prefers to go with PHP. Uh, for ASP, no comments, because I never prefer uh, Microsoft technologies. Uh, Ruby is one of again. It's a it's a growing platform. Uh, in fact, Twitter or Facebook was built using PHP, right? Uh, Twitter was built using Ruby. Then question: What is uh, where we use Servlet? If you see most of the websites, uh, around I guess 95, 90 ninety percent websites are built. Without serverless, they are either built using PHP, uh, Ruby, or ASP. Hardly there are websites which are built using using servlets, because servlets is basically Java, right? Why they don't prefer servlets? First of all, let me talk about some bad things first. Then we'll go for the good things. Uh, when you want to build a website using servlets, the hosting space is costly. Okay, in fact, that is what I am facing nowadays. The hosting space is very costly. Second problem is uh, it is difficult to learn. Not that difficult, but compared to PHP, yes, it is difficult. Uh, OK, what other drawbacks we have? Uh, and we don't have much developers who can work with servlets. That is one of the drawbacks. So those are, those are drawbacks. But what is the advantage of learning servlets? Now, the advantage of learning servlet is Let's go for the first one. OK, let's talk about the advantages. So when you say only 5 to 10 percent websites are built using, built using servlets, it's because servlets are stable. And everyone wants a stable application, right? No one wants an application which is not stable. Second, it is secure. OK, it is, why is this misbehaving now? OK, second, it is secure. And when it comes to security, uh, let's talk about banks. Let's talk about, uh, we have banks, we have financial institutions. They all use servlet maximum time because they want a website to be secure. I mean, when I when I deposit my money in a bank, I want to make sure that 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 bank website is secure, right? Because because of this demonetization, everyone prefers to use online banking now, and of course, we want our bank to be secure. Because when I do a transaction online, I don't I, I don't I don't worry about the transaction. I know it is secure, right? 
So if you talk about websites like uh, SGFC, uh, SBI, I guess they all use uh, they all use GSP sublets. But when it comes to a, a bank like Shabra Vital Bank, <laughs> they use ASPX. I don't uh, don't ask me what that bank is now. Shabra Vital Corporative Bank. I have account there, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Uh, Zub, you know about that bank? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Great. So, uh, so when you talk about Java websites like servlets, they are secure, they are stable, and they have lots of features uh, uh, like robustness, uh, stability. We have talked about this thing, right? So, so when it when it comes to heavy websites, they all use servlets. Okay. And when it comes to processing, so when it comes to processing, we use again we use Java. Okay. In fact, uh, Twitter. In fact, Twitter was built with the uh, with, with, with in Ruby. Okay, but later they changed their backend framework from Ruby to to Java or Sc uh, Java and Scala, because Ruby is they are finding it difficult to process huge amount of data using Ruby, because everyone used Twitter, right? Especially at the time of elections, you know, everyone want to use Twitter. So in that scenario, there were there were lots of requests, and that's why they moved from Ruby to Java and Scala. Any question to this point? Okay, perfect. <clears throat> okay. So if you want to create that helper application, which is which we have talked here. Okay, so so if you talk about this help, help application, we'll be using servlet because it is stable and secure. In fact, if you talk about the enterprise world, they all use servlet. In fact, not just servlet. Uh, if you heard about Spring MVC, if you talk about JSP, all these frameworks, the basic is servlet. So it doesn't matter what technology you work in Java. Maybe you're working with Sturge, you're working with uh, servlet, you're working with I mean, you're working with JSPs. Indirectly, you're working on servlets. So having the knowledge of servlets are very important. OK. <clears throat> now, let's start, with, let's start with servlets. So let's see how exactly servlet works. Let's go back to the same scenario. We have a client machine, and we have a server machine. Now this server will have two things. One is the static pages. So let's say we are dividing the section into two parts. We have all the static pages here, and we have all the dynamic pages here. Now who is responsible to create these dynamic pages? Okay, sorry for that. So who is who is responsible to create these dynamic pages? This is your servlets. So servlets are responsible to create that dynamic web page. Okay. Okay. So you have to send the request on the server, and that would be done with the help of so in. So we use a protocol which is HTTP, right? So everyone uses a protocol which is HTTP. We have to use HTTP server. 
So we have to use something called as HTTP request object. So there is a object called as HTTP request. So to send the request, the response you'll be getting. So the response you'll be getting is HTTP response. So the request is, I mean, the request is done with the help of request object. The response you get is the response object, and that is HTTP request and HTTP response. Okay. So let's say if you are if you are sending a request for a static page, it's very simple. The request will go to the servlet. I mean, sorry, for this to this server. Then let's say this is your web server. So that's your web server. Okay. So the request goes to web server, and web server sees. Okay, hey, this is your. So this is your simple web application, right? Where where you are asking for, where you are asking for. Okay. Yeah. So when you send a request, so when you when you are asking for a static page, you will be getting a static page. No no hassle there. But when it comes to servlets, when you send a request, it will check. Hey, I don't have that page here. Let's say I'm asking for a page. This is a dot html. This is b dot html. This is c dot html. And now you're asking for D. Hey, hold on. I don't have any page with D. But there is a servlet here who can who can provide D.html. Uh, but hold on. How can I who how how would your server know that you want to run a dynamic page? So this place is a special place. You can see this section is a special section where, where your servlet works. So this space is called as uh, a servlet. Container. So this space is called a servlet container. So when you send a request, if that request is a static page, it will get a response. But if that page is a dynamic page, then of course you have to use web container. Okay, so you send a request, you get a response with the help of so this servlet will be, will be running inside a servlet container. Then question arises: uh, What makes a server server? Because we always think, right? Our machine is a client machine. Then how can I make this the current machine as server? Is it possible? Uh, yes. What makes a laptop a server is a software. If you can install a software. Which is a server software. It will make your simple laptop as a server. It's that simple. Now, which to which topic which topic you are talking about? I mean, which server we are talking about? Now we have multiple servers which we can use. One of them is a Tomcat server, which is very famous. Otherwise, we can use a Glassfish server, which is from Oracle. We can use WebLogic. We can use WebSphere. So we have multiple servers available. In fact, we can also use a Pivotal server. Uh, what else server we have? We have JBoss server, which actually I'm using for my servers. Right. So we have all this. So we have all this. We have all these servers here. Now, which one to use? So when it comes to servlet container, we can use Tomcat, which is lightweight, because Tomcat only has a, a servlet container; it doesn't have anything else. But when, when it comes to Glassfish, you know, uh, Glassfish provides you multiple features. Now, when you say multiple features, that means it is bulky. Right. So Tomcat, we have Tomcat for which is lightweight. So this is lightweight. Other servers are bulky. In fact, Pivotal is lightweight, but we should be using Pivotal only for Spring MVC because that is good for that only. I don't prefer to use that. You can do that. You can do the experiment there. I I, I always prefer Tomcat to run servlets, which is lightweight. Okay, others are bulky because this this are not a simple web app, web web server. They are app servers. Now, when you say app server, when you talk about EJB and all the stuff, we require app servers. 
That means to work with this servlets, we require a Tomcat. Then question arises, how to use Tomcat? What are softwares needed? Let me just go back to my subline to discuss about that. Share my subline with you now. Okay, before going for that, any questions, anyone? Okay. Huh. So let so what are softwares needed for this? The first software is Eclipse. Okay, so first software is Eclipse. Now why we need Eclipse? Because Eclipse is an IDE which is used to build applications in Java. Again, uh, if you have ever worked on Android, if you have ever worked on uh, okay, what else we can do in Eclipse? So there are certain certain software, certain frameworks we, which we can run in Eclipse. So Eclipse is an IDE to make Java web application. I mean, Eclipse is not the only IDE there. You know, we have NetBeans. Uh, we have so we have NetBeans. We have uh, we have IntelliJ. Is it the spelling of IntelliJ? Yeah. So we have IntelliJ. Uh, we have okay, what else? We have STS. Then we have JBoss Developer Studio, which I prefer. It is JBoss Developer Studio. So all these are basically Eclipse only. In fact, STS and JBoss Developer Studio are STS. In fact, if you can see this logo, uh, I'm sure you cannot see that. Okay, I will, I will show you how JBoss looks like later. JBoss and STS. So all these are IDEs. Now what is IDE? IDE stands for integrated, so it's integrated development environment. You know what happens earlier time, uh, 10 to 6 years back or 10 to 12 years back, if you want to write a Java code, you have to type the code inside, HT, uh, inside a notepad or on the notepad, then you have to save that file then you have to start the Tomcat server by going to command prompt. Then once you do, once you start your Tomcat server, then you have to uh, yeah. So first you have to type you have to type the code in Notepad. Then you have to start the Tomcat server using command prompt. Then you have to deploy the application using command prompt, and then you have to test the application using command prompt. So instead of focusing as a programmer, instead of focusing on the main thing, you are focusing more on uh, more on the, this command prompt. That's what make so that's what make the system or the programmer efficiency less, right? And that's why we got IDE concept where you can write, where you can write, run, test, deploy, everything can be done in one software, and that is IDE. So one of the best IDE available is, is Eclipse. Uh, in fact, the topmost IDE is IntelliJ. Uh, so one of the best IDE available is IntelliJ, but the problem is IntelliJ is not free. Again, the community version of IntelliJ is free, but the problem is, uh, but the problem is, uh, community version will not have all the features. So we have to use. Uh, so if you want all the features, Eclipse is best. In fact, STS and JBoss Developer Studio they are based on Eclipse. So STS stands for Spring Tool Suite. Uh, so if you want to build only Spring applications, so if you want to use only Spring application, uh, then you have to use STS. In fact, I use all. I have STS here. I have JBoss Developer Studio. For different projects, uh, we work with different softwares. So for this course, we'll be using Eclipse. So that is one thing we require. We don't require all this stuff here. Now what else we require? We require a server, right? And that is Tomcat. So Tom Tomcat. Uh, what else we require? So in future, we'll be also working with uh, JDBC. So we require MySQL. So since we are started with servlets now, uh, servlets for servlets, it's enough to work with Eclipse and Tomcat. But we'll be working with JDBC. We'll be working with Hibernate. 
for that we'll be using mask here okay okay so so we, let's say how to download eclipse so let me share my browser with you first Okay, before sharing my browser, I have to make sure that I close all the windows. Okay. Let me share my browser with you. Where is my Chrome? It's here. So you have to go to google.com first, or google.co.in if you're in India. And that's the awesome doodle for today. What is that? This is. I don't know what's that. Anyway, so what we'll do is let's let's download. Okay, so let's download this software here. Okay. Uh, so we have a question from. Oh, is it? It's which which site? N I N. Uh, ITE.com. Is it your website, uh, Dhruv? Oh my God, they have all the softwares. This is awesome. We can download Java, we can download Eclipse. Where's Eclipse here? Uh, okay, why I cannot see Eclipse? Eclipse, Eclipse, Eclipse. Developer, yeah, we can see Eclipse here. That's awesome. But I will not use this. <laughs> I cannot trust any other website. Okay, let me just go to. Oh, it is. It, whose website it is? I've seen this website for the first time. It is Design Inc. Awesome job, by the way. Easy to use website. And that's my favorite player, GOM player. I, don't know, I, I, I can't trust any, any other websites now. Anyway, so let's go to Eclipse uh, website, Eclipse, down, Eclipse download. They will give you, so that's the website which you have to use, which is Eclipse download. Okay, and you can see there are lots of uh, so we can say we can say download neon here. In fact, they got their uh, new Eclipse now, which is Oxygen. So if I click on download 64 bit, and you can click on download, it will download Eclipse for you. But provided you have also have, uh, provided you also have JDK. So we cannot install Eclipse without JDK. Okay, so you have to make sure that. So make sure you have uh, JDK in your system. Okay, you can download this and it will download your Eclipse. Now once you got Eclipse, what else we need? We need Tomcat. So you have to go to the Tomcat website. Uh, and that's your website. You can say do download Tomcat 8. And go for Tomcat 8, not 8.5. So go for Tomcat 8. And in this, you can see we have option of so if you are so depend upon what machine we use. If you are if you are a Windows user, you can download the zip version. If you are a Ubuntu or Mac version, you can download the tar version. Okay. Now since I'm using Mac, I'll be using tar. So in Ubuntu, also the same thing. Or maybe any Linux distribution for that. You can click on this tar.z. It will download that. Then it will give you a search, and then you have to start. In fact, we don't. We just have to download that, unzip it, and everything will be done by Eclipse. So tar or zip, your choice. That's one way. There another way of doing that. We'll see that later. 
So once you download downloaded the Eclipse, open the Eclipse now. Uh, let me just do that. So I'm saying open Eclipse. Okay. And I'm just trying to open my Eclipse. Let me share my Eclipse screen with you. Where is Eclipse, 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 Eclipse? Why I can't see Eclipse in here? Okay, just give me a sec. Okay, when you open Eclipse, and uh, okay, you cannot see Eclipse. No, I know, but when you open Eclipse, it will ask you for the workspace. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot, I cannot share the, that pop-up screen. But when it will ask you for the workspace, you can go for the default workspace. I will. I'm going for the workspace as Pac-Man. The dispatch name. Okay, well, I have this habit. Okay, whenever I start with new batch, I always give a name to the batch. Uh, so the last batch was Mario batch. The current batch is called as uh, the Pac-Man batch. Okay, <laughs> so you this batch is Pac-Man. I hope that's okay with you, people. <laughs> How about you, Gaurav? From uh, from uh, Mario batch to Pac-Man, you're the only one who is enjoy who enjoyed both the batches. Okay, where is you? Where, where are you, Gaurav and Chakra? It's been a long time, almost uh, 20 minutes. You are not there. No chat. I'm audible there, Chakra and Dhruv and Gaurav. Okay, that means you're doing with me, Chakra. Okay, so so I'm opening a workspace here, and I'm I'm naming that workspace as Pacman itself, so that next time I will know where was where, where we were. So let's click on OK, and we got our Pacman. So it is opening my Eclipse now. I guess I can share my screen. It will take some time. So make sure you go with either. Mars or Neon. Uh, because uh, if you if you are going for uh, the older version, it may not support some features which we are going to use. So make sure either you are going for Mars or Neon. In fact, preferably go for Mars because it is more stable compared to Neon. And I, I, I'm a strong believer of using stable softwares, especially when you are learning stuff. And okay, here we go. That's your that's your Eclipse. So you can see it is Eclipse ID uh, Java E E I D E. Okay, you have to make sure that you are downloading. You are downloading this E E version because in Eclipse also we have two versions. One is for Java developers, and second is for Java EE developers. And you have to make sure that you're going for EE version. OK, now let's close this welcome window. And so OK, in my system, I already have JBoss, so that's why it is getting opened. But you will not get this option. And I hate this all this thing which is coming on the screen. Uh, OK, so when you open your Eclipse, this is how it looks. OK, I think I should share my entire screen for time being. So I'm sharing my entire screen with you. Okay, so that's how Eclipse looks like now. Now, this is so. Let, let me just introduce with you Eclipse. I don't know how many of your people, how many of you are comfortable with uh, Eclipse. Okay, uh, so this is Eclipse, and if you say, if you go to Eclipse, and if you say about Eclipse. You can see uh, Eclipse. I'm using the version which is 4.5.1, which is Mars point one. I guess new one is 4.6, and 
Okay. And it was it has all the copyright things here. Okay. Uh, I have also talked about STS, right? So if you so if you can see this, this is STS. So if it's the the spring you, you're seeing now, it is STS. It is Spring Tool Switch. Okay, and this is also Eclipse. You can see there's a logo here which is Eclipse. So this is the customized version of of Eclipse. You can see it is based on the platform Eclipse Neon One. So it doesn't matter if you are working with uh, STS or or Eclipse. Both are same with some extra features. Uh, in fact, JBoss. This is JBoss Developer Studio. Okay, ignore all this code here. That's that's my website code. Ignore everything. Okay, so this is this is JBoss. JBoss Developer Studio, and if I click on about JBoss Developer Studio, even this is Eclipse. This is the, okay, this is the customization of Eclipse. You can click on Eclipse code here. Okay, so no, having knowledge of Eclipse will always give you the advantage over other IDEs. So once you know Eclipse, you can learn other IDEs very easily. Then get back to Eclipse, and that's Eclipse now. So in this Eclipse, you can see on the left side we have Project Explorer. And then we have so now this point is very important. This point you can see we have Java E here on the right hand side top. We have Java E E. And if I click on this this link here, okay. So if you click on this link, you can see there it says open perspective. If I click on that, in my system I have all this perspective. And I, it depends upon how many plugins you have downloaded. Uh, if you're downloading for the first time, you will not get all the options. Since I have Eclipse for a long time, you can see all this stuff here. So I'm selecting Java EE here. You have to make sure that you you are selecting Java EE. If you're selecting Java EE, then only you will get this server tab, and this tab is very important because if you don't have this tab. Then it is it is of no use. You cannot run your Tomcat applications. Now, question arises: How do we how do we do that? How do we create a project? Now, how to create a first project is right click here. We'll say new. Okay, we can't see the chat window. Okay, so I click here and say new project, and now here we have to select web project. So we have to say select web app. So we'll say web, and you can see we are getting an option of dynamic web project. You have to make sure that you're selecting dynamic web project because that is what will give you a servlet application. Because if you select static web, web project, it will only allow you to use HTML. So we'll select dynamic web project. We'll say next. Okay. Now here you have to provide a project name. Now that is very important, right? Project name is very important. So we'll say first servlet. Project. Again, you can have any project name for that matter, but I'm going for the web server project name. Next thing is the target runtime. Now, this target runtime, because whenever you want to run your project, of course you need a server. So that is your Tomcat server, right? Or maybe any other server. So if I expand this, I can see I don't have any server. So before creating the project, you should you should have a Tomcat server. But let's say then let's set up that later. Again, you can set up that from here as well. You can say new server, and you will not get all these options. It is just because I have installed some plugin in my machine. That's why I'm getting this JBoss and OpenShift options. You will be getting Apache option, and you can select Apache a Tomcat V8, which is version 8. You can click on next, and you can follow the steps. But that will do later. Next is the dynamic web module version. Now, if you can see, servlet, when servlet was introduced publicly, the first version was 2.2. So 2.2 is the first public version for servlet or servlet API. 
but we will be using 3.0 or 3.1. The problem is if you are using 2.5 by mistake, you cannot use all the latest features, example, annotations. So you have to make sure that whenever you get a project, you're selecting about 3.0. And what next? Uh, everything seems simple here. We'll click on next. Nothing here much. Now, this is important. Whenever you get a project, make sure you generate web.xml file. Because this file is your deployment descriptor, which is very important. Again, we'll talk about this file later. But you have to make sure that you select this thing and click on finish. Now, once you click on finish, you will get your project. OK, it is taking some time. And that's your project. And you can see there's a, there's an Earth symbol there that represents a, that represents that, that, that's a web project. OK? Now there's a problem. Even if you have a web project, you don't have a server. Because even if I try to run this project, of course, it doesn't have any pages here. OK, we don't have any page. But even if you have a page, you cannot run this. Because to run this application, you need a server. Now, how do we connect a server? It's very simple. Click on No Server Available. Select for the server. Again, we can do that from the first step itself. But I love to do it from here. So let's select Tomcat 8.0, say Next. Now, you'll be getting two choices. One is Download Install or Browse. So if you have downloaded the Tomcat from the Tomcat website, you can click on Browse. And you can search for the location where you have your Tomcat. I don't know where is my Tomcat. I'm serious, you don't know now. The Tomcat. OK, that's weird. OK, I just hope it will work. I just hope. <laughs> OK, because it's been a long time I don't have the Tomcat. So, so to select the file. Say next and click on finish. Now, when you click on finish, right click on your server and say start. And your server started. It's awesome, right? So now you have a server on your machine. But let me give you a twist. Let me stop the server once again. Right click and stop. Let me open STS just to just to show you something. If I open STS here, and if I start a server from STS, which is Tomcat, okay, I'm starting the server. That means there is one Tomcat which is already running on my system, and this Tomcat is running on the port number. Let me just check that. Okay, that's weird. OK, perfect. So we got our server started in the here yeah, there. Now let's start the server in our Eclipse. Now what is what will happen is that server which is running in STS, they, these are two different servers. It doesn't matter how many port we have. Okay. By default, the port number of HTTP would be 8080. So if you can see, if you double click on your server, it will give you the option where you can change your port numbers. And you can see. That port number is 8080, and this server port number is also 8080. Two different servers, and they're using the same port number. And if I say start, it's taking some time, and you got the error. Now, this error is very important because maximum time you will get the error. This error says Several ports with 8080 and 8009 required by Tomcat server is already in use, which simply means that you already have a server which is running. You have to make you have to make sure that you change the port number. Now, how to do that? We we'll click on OK. Either we have to stop the server, so you can go to STS and you can stop the server. It will work, or you can change the port number. Instead of having 8080, you can have 8084 or 8086. Any port number. Now, if I change the port number, if I say start, you can see it will start, of course. We have two different servers. Oh, 
Okay, I have to change this one as well. Let's make it 11. So let's start this. Yes, so we can see we have two different servers, both are running, but on different port numbers. So there's something debugging things which you have to remember when you work on uh, Java websites. OK, now once your Tomcat is configured, now what next? But the problem is that Tomcat, before that, anyone any questions? Uh, Exactly, so support number defines where the operator will, will be performed. Okay, now let me just, so if we talk about this, if we talk about this app here, now that application and this server, they're not linked. We have to make sure that our application and server is linked. How can we do that? Right click here, go to properties, go to, okay, go to server, you can see we have a server, or the easy way is go to build path, go to libraries. You can see here we have ER libraries, we have JRE libraries. Okay, there's one concern here. You can see my JRE says I have one point, which is using 1.6. I don't want to use 1.6, I want to use 1.8 because in my system I do have 1.8. Double click here and you can change this to 1.8 just to make sure that you don't get any problem in future. Next, we have to add a server. Now, how do we add a server here? So we say add library, server runtime. So add library, server runtime, click on next. Tomcat, Apache Tomcat, click on finish. And you can see we got your server there. Now, if you click on OK, your application and your Tomcat is linked now. How can you verify? Go to your server tab, open your Tomcat. Oh, it is not, start, it is not yet here because we have not published it. Once you publish your application, it will it will coming in this tab as well. Okay. Now by doing that, we have configured our app, our project and the Tomcat. Now let me just share. Let me just go back there and let me only share my Eclipse screen now. So before that, before going ahead, any questions? Okay, now what we'll do is let, let's take a break for two minutes and then we'll, come, we'll continue. We'll do. So again, for every session, because we have a session for two hours and unfortunately I cannot, uh, I cannot, I cannot uh, continue to talk for two, two hours. So we'll take a break in between. You know, after one hour, we'll take a break for five minutes or three minutes, depending upon my stamina. So let's take a break now. So we'll, we'll see you in two minutes.
Okay, so here we go. I'm back from the break. Okay, so we have a point from uh, Chakra. Can we have this session at 8 p.m. instead of 9? Okay, hold on. I guess there's something wrong with my voice. Is it proper? One? Okay, so uh, so yeah, so you're saying Chakra the act, instead of having a session at nine, can we have it at eight p.m.? Uh, let me just try that. Uh, the problem is, I think we can try that. We can try that. Let me just figure it out how how we can arrange this and let's go ahead with that. How about you, Gaurav? Uh, since Gaurav is in Singapore, so I don't know how comfortable he is. And we are not hearing from him for a long time. We'll let you know, Chakra. Let me have a word with Gaurav with, with this. Because he's not from India, so I mean, he's not in India now. Okay. Now, once we have our Tomcat set up, we are Eclipse set up, let's create a new project. Uh, let's create a new, new sublet. How do we get a new sublet? Now, the way you can create a sublet is by right click on the. Okay, let's not go for. Okay. Uh, what we'll do is the first code which we're writing here is to add two numbers. Okay, we'll, we'll simply go for addition of two numbers. I mean, we should be doing hello world. We should be doing hello world, uh, but let's go for additional two numbers. So for that, what we'll do is let me again sh sh um, share my. Uh, sometimes the word gets stuck on your tongue. Okay, let me share the entire screen with you. Okay, so yeah, so now how to create a web? For first of all, we create a simple web page where 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 you will ask your user to add to put to enter two values. Right, so let's do that. Okay, we'll right click here, we'll say new, uh, we'll create an HTML page, and in this HTML page, we'll say this page is index.html. We'll click on finish, and that's your page. Okay, there's a problem with the font here, let's change the font. And you know, I have seen lots of people that not that they don't know how to change the font in Eclipse. Even I was not knowing for a long time. Okay, uh, because it is very difficult to search that. Uh, you have to go to pre uh, preference. Uh, for for Windows user, it will be in Window folder. Now, once you go to preference, go to general, uh, then go to appearance, then go to color and fonts, then go to basic, then go to text font. You know, it's a long procedure. Then click on edit. And uh, let's say select 14. 14 will be better, I guess. Or maybe 15, which is not in the list. But let's say 15, click on OK, and that's your font. OK, so now uh, the extra things which we don't need will minimize that. OK, now, you know, in Eclipse, we get this feature of getting a view as well. You can see we have source, preview. So whatever you type, it will give you the preview. Example, if I click visual and source, and if I say hi, okay, hi, you can see we got that. Uh, if I write in bold, you know, we can actually check the things which you are getting there. So we got in bold. Okay, but we don't want to do that. We want to ask a user to enter two values. Now, when you say you you will be asking the asking for the values, and then you will click you will click on the submit button, and that request will be going to the server. Then we have to use a form tag. So we have to use a form tag here, which will open close, and will say form, and will mention something very simple. We'll say I want to call. I want to add two numbers. So I want to call addition. Okay. So we are calling for the addition. Now, when to call for addition? 
whenever I enter two values, and if I click on the submit button, I should do that. So we'll say input type text, and I'm just assuming that you are comfortable with HTML. Okay, before going ahead, let me just share my Eclipse only. It's very risky to share the entire screen. By mistake, if I go to another tab and you know, if, if I have some sensitive information there, it's very risky to see, share the entire screen. And now you can see only Eclipse there. Okay. So, let's say. That's T1, and we'll use a break here, and then we'll go for enter second number, and we'll say this is T2, okay? And then we require a submit button, we'll say input. So that you use submit, you don't use button here, because when you use button, it will not be implied on the form tag, because buttons are normally used for JavaScript, not for form tags. For form tag, we have to make sure that we use submit. OK? Now, when you click on the submit button, it will call this addition. Let's try. Let's try to run this code. And if you run this code here, on the server, OK, uh, now I, I'm sure you cannot see this. But if I click on this run button, it will ask you for the server name. Just, just select the server and click on finish. And it will show you the output. And you can see we got our output here. OK. Now, you think it will work? Do you think it will work? If I click, if I add to, if I put those two values there, and if I click on the submit button, will it work? Yes, of course, right? We don't have a logic here. So of course, it will not work. So if I, if I enter two values, if I say five and six, my favorite two values, if I click on submit, you got one of the most famous error in the world, which is error HTTP status for not four, file not found. But there's something, there's nothing wrong with the Tomcat, right? We can see we got Tomcat here. So there's nothing wrong with the Tomcat. There is something wrong with our linking. We are sending a request. We are calling add, and you can see it is coming in address bar as well. It is saying localhost, the port number, then the project name, the project name, and that's your request name, which is you are calling for the addition, and you are passing two values. You are passing T1 and T2. Right? So we have to create something which will which will handle this this addition thing and let's do that for that we have to get a servlet we'll say new i'm creating a new servlet here now how can you create a servlet you have to right click on your you have to right click on your project let me share that let me share the entire project entire screen now again right click here say new and you can see there's an option of servlet here now, when you click on servlet, it will ask you for the name of the servlet. OK, we can also mention the package. We'll say com.telisco. Uh, that's my website name, telisco.com. And the package or the class name will say this is add servlet. OK, we'll click on next. Now you can see, if you click on next, it is asking you for the URL mapping. Now, what exactly it is? So it is saying, hey, I'm a servlet. So add servlet as servlet, of course. But the problem is, when I will be called, I mean, in it, which request will call me? So you have to make sure that you mention the request name. So I, whenever I call addition, so whenever I call addition, it should call add servlet. And you can do that with the, when you double click on here, so you can see it is. it will ask you for the, URL, and you have to enter the URL, and you have to say OK. Then click on Finish. Once you click on Finish, you will get the entire servlet. It's taking some time. And you can see we got the entire servlet here. Can you see that? We don't have to type any code. But hold on. We are a very good person. We are very good people, right? 
we'll remove everything here and let's do from scratch how to add two numbers okay now let's go for step by step uh, for this again i will share my uh, i only i will only share my eclipse now Okay, just give me a second, guys. Okay, yeah. so you can see my you can see my eclipse screen now. Okay, so let's create a servlet from start. Now, how do you get a servlet? Uh, okay, uh, let's talk about the basics. So when you say you want to create something in Java, the best thing is, if you want to create something in Java, you have to create a class of object. And let's name this class. We'll say this is add servlet because your class is add servlet. Now, what makes a normal class a servlet? Because servlet will have extra features and this class doesn't have an extra feature. How can you add those extra features now? Now it's very simple. To add those extra feature, you simply say extends HTTP servlet. Because when you extend HTTP servlet, you will get all the features of servlet. Hey, but hold on, what is HTTP servlet here? So HTTP servlet is a special. Okay, I'm not able to import the package for that. So I should be servlet. If I go to HTTP servlet, oh, now that's the issue. You can see it says attach source. Again, when you click on the for, for the first time, you can see you, you don't have the source. But my system, my uh, my Eclipse has searched the source for source for me, and you can see I got the source. In case if you're not getting the source, this is the source code for the servlet. Uh, if you're not getting this, okay. First of all, how to get the, get here? I uh, just Click on the con I mean press the control button and click on the servlet name. It will give you the source with it, it will give you the source code here. But only when you have a source code attached. By default, it will not be attached. You have to make sure that you attach it. Now, if you don't know how to do that, just go to Google, go to Apache Tomcat website and download the source code for this. Okay. Okay, now what else? So we have public class, a uh, public abstract class, HTTP, HTTP servlet extends generic servlet. So if you want to get the important features of a servlet, we need to extend that servlet by generic servlet. What is generic servlet? So generic servlet is abstract class which implements servlet. Then question arise how to create a servlet? The only way to create a servlet is by implementing a servlet. But instead of implementing a servlet, we can also say extend HTTP servlet because HTTP servlet indirectly implements servlet. That means to achieve the features of a servlet, we just need to say extend servlet or extend HTTP servlet. Again, we'll talk about the life cycle of, of, uh, of the servlet in the next few sessions. Time being focus, we have to extend HTTP servlet. Now in this HTTP servlet, what method we need? Because see, in Java, when you say you want to do something, because if this servlet will take two values from the user, it will add those two values, and it will print. So when you say you are say you are doing something, it simply means you have to use certain methods. Now which method we have to use? Now we cannot use any method. We have to be very specific because servlet is very specific. Servlet says, hey, you, if you want to execute something, 
always use a method name as service. So you have to make sure that when you use a servlet, you have to use a method name as service. Now in this service, you have to use two objects. Now what are two, those two objects? One is the request object. Second is the response object. Now why we need these two objects? is because when your user is saying, hey, I'm sending you two values, how can you accept those two values? Because if your user says, I want, I'm sending you two values, you have to accept it, right? And you can accept those two values if you have an object. And that object will be HTTP servlet request object. So we have to make sure that you are creating an object of HTTP servlet request. We'll say, uh, let's import the package for that. Import it, and you can see all this, all these classes are belong to a package Java X dot servlet. And let's name this object as request as uh, request. The next object we need is HTTP servlet response. Object is because when you are sending the response to the sub to, the server, of course you will be required. You will require a response object. Now once we got these two objects, now what next? So what will happen now is you will click on the submit button. The request will go to addition, and that request will go to add servlet. But hold on. Where the hell we are writing that it is linking? So what we can do is to link because see if I run this code, let's run this. Let's run this once again. If I run this code, even if you have a servlet, I'm running this code now. It's taking some time. So even if I have a servlet, if I say five, if I say six and eight, if I click on submit, you can see it is not. It says it is not able to find addition. But we have a servlet, right? The problem is we are calling for addition, but we don't have addition here. There's no link between addition and add servlet. We have to provide that link. Now, how can we do that? We can do that by configuring our okay. So we can do that with the help of an annotation called as at web servlet. Again, we have two ways. One is using at web servlet or by using web.xml file. Since we are doing this for the first time, we'll not go for web.xml file. We'll use at web servlet. Now, when you just say at, it simply means annotations. Now, if you are not familiar with annotations, I have shared you with I have shared you the link, I have shared you the videos of Kojava uh, today evening. In that, so that that's a paid course, Kojava videos. Make sure you watch the video of annotations. Uh, you'll get the idea how that works. And here you can mention in the web servlet, you have to input the package for that. So it belongs to a package Java X dot servlet or annotation. Uh, technically, we don't have to remember all these packages. Okay, it will be coming if you use IDEs. And in this, you have to mention the path. So I'm calling for addition. So whenever I request for addition, call add servlet. Let me repeat. Whenever you call for addition, call add servlet. Let's try this once again now. Let me just run the server. It will take some time. OK, now let's enter those two values. We'll say 7 and 9. If I click on Submit, you can see we got nothing. But at least we, got, we have not got the error. This is the first time we have not got the error. That means we are on the right track. That means when you request for addition, it is able to find the servlet. Now, since this servlet is doing nothing, that's why you're not getting the output. So let's do something. So what we'll do is let's take so the first value, which is T1. So you see, when I enter value 7, it goes to T1. So we have to fetch the value. So when you fetch the value, you have to put that value into I. Now, how can we do that? Now, remember, whenever you send a request from client machine to server, we use request object. So request is the object which will hold these two values. So we'll say request dot 
dot get parameter because whatever you send in the address bar, if you can see, if you can see here, the data is coming in address bar, right? You can see t1 equal to 7 and t2 equal to 9. So to fetch the data from there, we can use request parameter and you can mention which parameter you're talking about here. You're talking, you're talking about t1. So the value will be coming from t1, it will be assigned to int. But hold on, you're getting an error. It's because this t1, I mean get parameter t1 will give you string and I want integer. And the only way to convert string to integer, way to use integer dot pass int so that we'll convert that string into integer. Now once we done we have done with i, let's do that for j as well. So we'll say this is int j and this is t2. Now once we got these two values, it is very easy now. Simply say int int k equal to i plus j. Now we have added those two values. Let's print those. Let, let's print the value. Let's print k. And if you print the value of k now, let's run this. I hope it will work. Okay, I, I, I guess I'm running the wrong code here. Let me just refresh this. Okay, so I'm refreshing the page, and if I'm saying seven plus eight, if I click on submit, hey, we got nothing. But can you see that in the console we got 15? Because the values were 7 and 8, we got the output as 15. That means we got the output. So that's your first code for sublet. But hold on. We wanted the output in the we wanted the output on the browser, right? We are using, we are building a website. So no one wants the output on the console window. Everyone wants the output on the browser. How to do that? That's the first question. The second question is, we don't have any main method, right? Because we are coming from Core Java, where so we are using. So when you are, we are coming from Core Java, and we know that whenever you use any application, we have to use a main method. Where is the main method here? There's no public static void main. Then who is responsible to start this outlet? Who is responsible to run this application? Right. To display, to display, to, I mean, to run this application, we don't need main. Because when you work with JVM, you need main function or main method. But here we have a Tomcat. And Tomcat says, hey, buddy, don't worry. I will run this outlet. I have the power to run any servlet because servlet runs on on Tomcat. So that main method will be provided by your servlet. Or uh, the main method will be provided by your web container, which is which is Tomcat. Okay, so we don't need main here. Okay. And what about how to print that on browser? Uh, that's a tricky part. That we'll see in the <laughs> next session. So stay tuned. And see you in the next session. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't want to be a, a comedy show here, but that's how that's how you work with servlet. Again, we can we can do that on the browser. Let's do that. How to print that stuff on browser? The problem is when you say system dot out dot print ln, it is printing in the system console because the moment you say system, it will print on the console. Let's remove system. I want to say out dot print. Okay, uh, but where out dot print will print where? I want to say out dot print ln should print on the browser or on the client page. So that means we have to send this data k with the response object, because the moment you send a response to the client, that's your HTML page, right? If you see the output here, this is your HTML page. This is the response page. You have to add your data in the response page. Okay, now how to do that? We can do that with the help of print writer. So we'll say print writer out equal to. So from where you'll be getting the object of print writer here? And uh, it is very simple now. It is to the response dot get writer. 
If you do that, if you say response dot get writer, it will give you the object of print writer. Okay. So every time you say print at print dot print ln, it will print on the response object and response object which is which is coming on the screen here. Okay, but still there's an error. It says there might be an exception, and we are lazy people, so we'll be using throws. We'll be saying throws exception. Again, we can use try catch here, but we are lazy, so we'll be using throws exception. But we cannot do that because we're overriding. We'll say we'll be specific are you exception. Okay. Now everything seems good. Let's run this. I hope you will be getting the output. Uh, let's say seven and uh, eight and nine. If I click on submit, hey, finally we got the output. Can you see that we got the output on screen now? We got seventeen there. That's how you take the values. That's how you add the values, and that's how you print on the screen. Okay. Now there's a question from Dhruv. Static import. Why we need why we need that? Why we need to do static import here? Oh, we are talking for, for parsint. Dhruv, for parsint you're talking about? For okay, for what then? Oh, this one you're talking about. Out dot print Are we using I mean do we are use I mean are we using static import? Uh, no, we are not doing that. Out is the object of print writer. Okay, I guess you're con you're getting confused with the system dot out print ln. Let me just change the name. So let's say pw. So pw is the object of print writer, and we are saying pw dot print ln. Make sense, though? Okay, perfect. So that's it from today's session. Next session is tomorrow. Again, uh, Chakra, let's let me just. Uh, Figure out the timing, uh, 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Even I would love to go for 8 p.m. batch. Let's 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 see let's see how it goes. Uh, any question from the from today's session? It was more of basic introduction, nothing else, right? Okay, perfect. Hey, hi, Gaurav, you you you're back. Uh, Gaurav, uh, how how about eight p.m. session? I mean, one hour before session, because today we started at nine p.m. And as you as we know that you are from, you're not from, you're not in India now. How about eight p.m. session? Are you comfortable with that? Okay, sure. So I will update you by tomorrow afternoon. Are we going for eight p.m. session or nine p.m. session? And I will confirm that with you. Because there are some other people who, who who have not shown up today. So that's it from today's session. Let me know the feedback, uh, people. Uh, please please uh, send me the feedback. That will be helpful for me. How you uh, I mean what you like in the session, positive, negative, both. And mostly after every two to three session, I will be asking you for the feedback. Do send the feedback to me. Okay. Uh, what you can do is you can send the feedback by going to my website. You can go to telesco.com. There is a. Just go to telesco. Let me share. Let me just show that to you. How to provide a proper feedback to me. And it, it is always helpful when you when you give feedbacks. Just give me a sec. Okay. So just go to my website, which is telesco.com. And you can see there's an option of feedback. Go to feedback and please provide your feedback here. Your name, email ID, your name, institute name. You can say Telisco because you are the current batch. You can you can type the current year. Provide a message. Anything positive, negative will do. Anything which which will help me to improve. 
And knowledge-wise, you can rate me here, and you can click on Submit now. Please do that today itself. So that's it from today's session. See you tomorrow. Have a great night. Good night. Bye-bye.